My guest right now is Dr. Terry O'Sullivan, who's a political science professor at the University of Akron. There he teaches about terrorism and homeland security. He's also associate director of homeland security for the University of Akron. Dr. O'Sullivan, many thanks for being with us. My pleasure. Absolutely. Your reaction to what happened now, does this end al-Qaeda? Unfortunately, no, it doesn't. Um, the, uh, the one thing about bin Laden is that uh, even for the 911 attacks, he was actually more of a symbolic leader uh, mm -hmm. of Al Qaeda, and the uh, operational people were uh, were the ones who even planned that attack. So uh, taking him out at this point is, uh, is certainly a symbolic mm -hmm. element. It may be demoralizing to some extent, but uh, Al Qaeda is uh, has been decentralizing pretty much since the uh, 911 attacks, uh, uh, and uh, is really almost a franchise. Mm -hmm. institution now. Uh, so they've got branches in a bunch of different places. Uh, Yemen we know about most prominently uh, with uh, Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula and there were, have been recent attacks mm -hmm. that were planned there. So uh, I, as I say I think it'll be a moral blow to some extent but it's certainly not going to end the terrorism threat. Does this however put a fissure in it or, or, or a crack in it where perhaps it can begin to crumble as a result of the killing of Osama bin Laden? I would like to be able to say yes, but I, I think that's debatable. I, th mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to uh, have a major impact in that regard. Uh, as I say, there are a lot of people out there to, uh, to uh, take his place. He certainly was a, a very symbolic leader, but, um, uh, and one of, the, one of the, uh, the masterminds of putting the organization together way back when. But there are a lot of people out there who can uh, uh, step in both at the symbolic level, but also who are very capable operationally. And, and indeed, I think in the short term, it may raise the, the threat level because of the possibility of revenge attacks. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, this is a moral victory for the United States, uh, uh, certainly, and, and the West. Should we brace ourselves for retaliation in a heavy way? It's very difficult to say. Um, the, uh, w one, one argument would be that if they had something really big to bring on, they would have done it, uh, that they would have uh, already brought out their, uh, their heaviest guns, as it were. Uh, and the other argument would be that the, now they're going to redouble their efforts. But it's not as though uh, they haven't been trying hard anyway. Yeah. What surprised you about this whole thing? Did anything surprise you? Oh, that's a good question. Um, not necessarily. This was, uh, this was something that I think was always going to be uh, a large amount of luck and, uh, and, and hard effort uh, on the, uh, at the intelligence end. Uh, and I think uh, I think the U.S. has learned some lessons over the years. Obviously, one one of which is to not tell the Pakistanis ahead of time that they're going to do something like this because of uh, the leakage element in the Pakistani military. Uh, but uh, but it was one of those things where he probably got a little sloppy, yeah. and uh, and uh, the fact that the, they traced the couriers back to him uh, was uh, was a big deal. So uh, it wasn't. I think the most surprising thing was that he was almost hiding in plain sight in this huge compound. Uh, 400 uh, yards away there was a police station. 1,000 yards away there was a Pakistani military post. Right. Uh, a right. Pakistan, uh, ally or foe? Well, uh, I think realistically it's safe to say technically they're an ally, but there are elements in Pakistan that are definitely foe. Um, mm -hmm. There's no question about it. The fact that uh, the that there are people in Pakistan who are sympathetic to Al-Qaeda and there are also certainly people in the Pakistani military that are sympathetic to the uh, militants, Al-Qaeda and otherwise. Uh, there's another very large or very active group uh, that's uh, kind of pure Pakistani, homegrown, uh, Lak uh, lashkar e Taiba, that perpetrated the attack on Mumbai, India. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, many people believe that they're kind of kind of be a uh, successor to Al-Qaeda in a lot of ways. Dr. O'Sullivan, yeah. the fact that Osama bin Laden was found in this million dollar, some call it a resort-like place, right. and not in the cave we thought he might right. be in, what right. does that tell you about Osama bin Laden and, and where he was uh, a, 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 as far as in control? Well, certainly in contrast to the spider hole that they found Saddam Hussein in, right? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. um, he uh, he uh, has a lot of sympathy in Pakistan, and so uh, he obviously uh, had a lot of resources and a lot of people behind him, and so I think the uh, the fact that whoever it was, a millionaire or uh, or uh, possibly even his own resources, it'll be interesting to see who built the mansion five years earlier. Uh, but uh, I I think that uh, he was in a pretty comfortable position unless and until uh, the word got out as it did. So um, 
but uh, yeah, not, not, not exactly living in a cave, was it? Uh, hiding in plain sight, I yeah. guess you could say. Yeah, yeah, okay. precisely. Dr. Terry O'Sullivan, University of Akron political science professor who specializes in teaching about terrorism and teaching about homeland security. We appreciate you being on the podcast. My pleasure, Thank yep. you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. My pleasure.